Hello there, welcome. So I'm going to carry on with my fabric sequel series and we're going to be looking at transactions and isolation levels within fabric warehouses. Now, yeah, look, I know it's not the funnest topic, but it's also really important. And just like SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, other RD RDBMS systems, Fabric SQL also has the concept of transactions and isolation levels. Although at the moment, we've really only got one isolation level, which is snapshot isolation, which kind of makes sense because the storage for a warehouse and also a lake house is based on Delta. And Delta has the optimistic you know, concurrency levels in terms of snapshot isolation. But with snapshot isolation, what you can do is when you're reading data, you can start a transaction, start selecting data from tables. If any data modification statements come in, so any updates, deletes, inserts on any of the tables that you're reading during that transaction, those update statements can you know, carry on and happily commit and your reading of that data is going to be consistent. All the tables are going to return their data at the point in which you began that transaction. So it's not going to clash. There's not going to be any locking there. And you'll get a consistent view of the data at a specific point in time. So if we jump into Fabric, I'm just going to demo this with a single table. So I've just got a very, very simple products table three columns, I'm going to insert three values in, iPhone 4, Cuddly Toy, and Lego Castle, which is probably my favourite Lego, actually. So if we run that select, I'm just going to bump that up above my camera, and we'll see the product key 1, 2, and 3. We've got iPhone 14, Cuddly Toy, and Lego Castle. Now, we're just going to concentrate on that product key 1, which is the iPhone 14. Now I'm going to run an update and update that to Samsung Galaxy, but we're going to start a transaction first. So I'm going to begin a, I'm going to begin a transaction. I'm going to select data and I'm going to use, you know, quite a handy command if you're testing transactions, which is wait for delay 30 seconds. And then it's going to run a select on the exact same table again. So if we run that select statement, let it run, I've got an update statement and that update statement is going to run an update on that products table immediately. So we're going to run that update. We're going to select from that table. And if I raise it up again, we can see that the product name is Samsung Galaxy. So it's committed that transaction. And we can see the um, we can see that it's been updated. If I go back to my transaction uh, where I started, both results should contain the same product name, which is iPhone 14. So we've got iPhone 14. I go to result two, and we also have iPhone 14. Right, so it could be the same table, could be multiple tables. It doesn't matter if you start that transaction and you start reading the data from those tables. Any changes come into those tables, those changes, well, as long as those changes don't conflict with each other, those changes can start and commit while you're reading data. But your reading of the data is going to be consistent from when you started the transaction. So really, really handy there if you want a consistent data load from your tables. So if I go back to uh, the update statement, now the update statement itself, because it's just a single update statement, I've not wrapped it in a transaction at all because you know, the single update statement is itself the transaction. But I could wrap multiple update statements in a transaction as well. It doesn't matter if it commits, 
and my reading transaction is still active, I'm still going to see a consistent snapshot version of the data at the point in time that the transaction started. So in terms of minimizing locking operations when you're writing data and reading data, yeah, snapshot isolation, really, really useful um, to be able to read data without you know, with a consistent uh, you know, point in time as well. I'm going to post a blog in the next few days, which is going to go into a little bit more detail. We're going to look at selecting, updating, deleting and inserting into a, a warehouse and see how the snapshot isolation handles those operations. Now, also, Microsoft's documentation talk about the lake house having the same transactional consistency so being able to run snapshot isolation as well so we're probably going to test with that as well because there are some caveats when you're using spark to update you know and insert data into tables and you're trying to read from those tables at the same time we'll go into that at a later date if you've enjoyed the video and you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing we're going to go further into fabric sql as we go along into the series so subscribe and you'll get notified as new videos come in thank you very much take care bye bye